Hi, everybody. Reese Davis with you, bringing you the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. You might think the games get more important as we get deeper into the season. Try selling that to this sellout crowd who's been screaming their guts out and ready for kickoff in the SEC. That does it for us here on the NCAA College Football pregame show. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at the half. Mississippi. It's time for the coin toss now. Presented by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Enjoy everything. The Ole Miss is kicking off first, and we're ready to get this game underway. He's to the 20. He makes it out to maybe the 29-yard line. Georgia Tech staff and their fans have heard all week long their quarterback's going to play terribly on the road. I think their staff's got them ready to prove them wrong right now. I, I think this staff really has rallied this entire team around some of that negative talk. And I think they believe in their guy that he can go on the road and make the plays and lead them to a big victory. Uh, you know, sometimes when you hit some adversity like that, you see teams circle the wagons. And I really believe this week they've done a great job of doing that. Now they just have to go out and execute the plan and go out and win this game. It's second down, 15 to go. Ball on the 23-yard line. Tackle made at the 31-yard line. The fullback powers ahead for a gain of eight on the play. Strike to the back, no good. They couldn't pick up the first down, so they'll have to put this one away. The defense held their ground on that play. The quarterback just wasn't able to find any open receivers. The putter. Madsen takes it at the 33. He's taken down at the 40-yard line. Now the offense gets ready to take their first crack at it. And he's tackled at the 48-yard line. Very well-designed play that time to give him a first down. The linemen executed their blocks nicely, and it went for a good game. The 47-yard line. Call it a gain of one yard. That makes it second and ten. That's right, baby. They don't want it. Check 83. Ball going to 83. Run it. Run in the end zone. Run in the end zone. Pass, pass. Moves up in the pocket. Throws it and it's tipped away. That was a nice, nice play to close on the ball like that. You can't teach that kind of reaction. It's just natural ability. Third down now, and they need to get it down to the 38s. Let's go! Ooh, hey, come on. Hey. Throws it. Got it. Complete. He's out of bounds. That is money in the bank. Sometimes you just can't stop a good combination. He's knocked. 
knocked out of bounds right around the 20. That'll make it second and inches. Coordinator. Big time play, taking that ball all the way in. Maybe the defense wasn't expecting a run. And he hits the PAT. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Let's have a look at what's going on in Morgantown. And for Baylor, they've lost two in a row. The Mountaineers win 24-20. Meanwhile, we take you down to Dura, and for Northwestern, they've won two straight. The Wildcats win it by three. All right, thanks a lot, Reese. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. It's fielded at the two. He gets out to about the 25-yard line. Ole Miss has really got things working right now. For him. I can't think of a better start. Well, that's exactly the way they had hoped to see this game go. I mean, anytime you can start the game with a stop, get your offense out there, they move the ball down, put points on the board. Now it's just more about trying to maintain what they've already created. You never like to have to play from behind, but a deficit this manageable shouldn't be in the front of their minds. They just need to go out there and play. They'll drop in for a loss. From their own 23-yard line. Second down. And he's stopped behind the line. You know, these backwards plays can have a psychological impact. It can damage a team's confidence if it keeps happening. But it's incomplete. Smith is waiting for the snap. And down he goes at the 45 yard line. So it's time to see this offense go to work again. This defense couldn't stop them from moving the ball and inevitably finding the end zone. Ole Miss up seven points. Tackle after a decent run up the gut. for a loss. The defensive end came through to put him away. Nice job of utilizing his athletic ability to get in there and then make a sure tackle. Third down and they need to get it down to the 35. Watch nine, watch nine. Good job, Brad. You didn't turn over. Keep that ball. Keep that ball. He wants it all going long. The defender had it and then dropped it. Parrish intended to see here on the play. That makes it fourth and eight. Simmons awaits the snap. This punt bounces into the end zone, and this will be a touchback. The Rebels are smothering the opposition so far today. What's this offense got to do to get off the schneid? Well, you've talked to offensive coordinators about that, and they'll say we've got to find our go-to guy. Who are our players that we know we can count on? And what are the plays that we typically feel the most confident about? That's usually where the offenses tend to go when they're getting shut down. And down he goes around the 23-yard line. Oh, 
Second down, seven yards to go. Ball on the 23. He's taken down at the 35-yard line. He's going to get some congratulations for that nice display of running. Normally, his job is to block. He's at midfield. Knocked out of bounds. At about the 41. And a good play there. Here they give it to the fullback on the option, and the big guy gets good yardage. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 41. He's tackled around the 39-yard line. That makes it second and eight. Credit those two defenses in that first quarter, or blame the offenses for a lack of production. Seven nothing, Rebels. to the action now here in the second quarter. Caught open field and he's taken down right around the 18 yard line. That makes it first and 10. Ten, ball on the 18. Get up, get up. Pitches back, and he carries the ball for a nice game. The option to the tailback, good for about four yards. That brings him second and five. From the 14-yard line, it's second down. And they make the stop at the five-yard line. You talk about a dual-threat guy. This guy can hurt you in the air or on the ground. And this is the eighth play of the drive. They'll bring him down behind the line. And the halfback's got nowhere to go. That brings him second and goal. We've got second and goal. Ball on the five. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. comes the kicker to try to tie this game up. And he converts the extra point. A nine-play, 80-yard drive, and they add seven points to the scoreboard. And Brad, right now, the offensive line just winning the battle in the trenches, opening up some big running lines. They line up to kick this one away. From his own goal line, he's to the 20. Across the 30. Out of bounds at about the 31. They've been like a couple of fighters feeling each other out so far. Let's see if they start to open it up a little bit more now. Lost the ball. Fumbles. It's recovered. They find themselves in a hole here after that sack. It's second and long. Ready! Ooh, Omaha! Omaha! Fires out 
to his receiver. Right down at about the 29 yard line. Slings it. They'll bring him down at about the 33 yard line. That'll bring up fourth and nine. Meeks back to return it. They'll bring him down at the 42 yard line. This is the point in the game where you don't want to make any mistakes that give the other guys a reason to feel more confident going into halftime. The Yellow Jackets saw one of their top players go down earlier, but it looks like he's going to be able to get back in there. He makes it to the 42-yard line. That makes it second and ten. So it's second and ten. Ball on the 42. to pitch it and now the ball is loose it's picked up by the defense Kirk what happened on the option play there well you got to give credit to the defense they knew what was coming and they came up and made the play you always want to go in the locker room with momentum so as we get closer to halftime I think we'll see more and more attempts to create big plays made around the 27 yard line he scrambled and he's tackled at the 26 yard line to get it to the 17. And he might want it all here and done! Almost intercepted. Jones on the coverage. Fourth down. Able to convert on fourth down, and the ball changes hands. Here comes the offense, hoping to erase the memory of the fumble on their last drive. Anytime you give the ball away, it's a disappointment. So these guys want to show that they can hang on to it. And a quick throw. He's tackled in the open field. I think he could have taken a risk down the field, but he played it safe instead, and that's one of the keys to winning ball games. So it's second down now, and they need about four yards to pick up the first. Now he's scrambling, and he can't get away from the pressure. sack and they're really getting some good pressure now wow this defense is playing that's a great three and out tough to get anything going against this kind of pressure Madsen is back to receive <laughs> tackle
Pacheco at the 44. I give the defense credit, but right now I think it's more a case of sloppy offense. Yeah, you got to recognize that both defenses have come into this game with the right mindset. They're very well prepared. But I'm with you. It's, it's one thing to have great defense. It's another thing when those defenses are going up against offenses that just are not clicking right now and hitting on all cylinders. This is the point in the game where you don't want to make any mistakes that give the other guys a reason to feel more confident going into halftime. There's a strike complete. He's at the 40, and he's level at the 35. The Rebels are going to call their second timeout. From the 35-yard line, it's first down. Tackles him hard at the 43. The protection broke down. The defense was in the backfield in a hurry, and they brought the quarterback down. Nice play. Short over the middle. Tackle at the 28-yard line. Ole Miss is out of timeout. They need about three yards to get the first down here on third down. So we'll probably get one last heave to the end zone here before halftime. To the end zone. He caught it. Touchdown. He splits the uprights with the extra point. A four-play, 56-yard drive, and they put up seven points. So our score... 14-7. They're probably just going to squib this kick. I don't think they want to see the return man create lightning before halftime. He's to the 20. He makes it out to maybe the 23-yard line. Well, we've played a half of football. Ole Miss's lead is a touchdown. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. This is Davis, Dave Pollock here in the studio as always to lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. One thing has been apparent in this first half that we just saw. Both defensive coordinators a step ahead of their counterparts on offense. They've had the answer for every formation, every shift, every movement, every motion that they tried to come up with. So, to try to break free and get something moving on offense, might it be time to show a little trickeration? A little trickeration never hurt nobody. I mean, it's it's something that if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. And you got to find a way to do something a little bit different because it wasn't working. Let's find some new plays in that book. Let's Let's run a little bit of option. Let's run us a reverse. Let's run some double passes. How about we bring a blitz with everybody? Just don't even cover anybody. Just bring everybody. Bring the house. You know, try to do something a little bit out of the ordinary. Try to get a spark going for your ball club. Just about time to start the second half. What, what do you think Herb Street's first point of analysis will be? Uh, I don't know. Something to do with quarterback play, I'm sure. We always got to hear that stuff all the time. It's all about the quarterbacks. Brad and Kirk ready for the second half. All right, Reese and David, welcome back, everybody. Just about set to start the second half. Number six, to return. Madsen fields it at the two. Tackle made at the 27-yard line. Both squads are digging in now. Let's see what happens on this next drive. Ole Miss is up a score. He gets out to about the 28-yard line. That's a game one on the play. That brings up second and nine. Makes it to the 37. Pass 
looks out to the tight end, but it's incomplete. Terrific coverage, and when you clog up passing lanes like that, you can force a quarterback to make some poor decisions. Almost got themselves a turnover, too. From their own 37-yard line, second down. And down he goes, right around to 34. it out to maybe the 33 yard line Game one on the play. that brings up second and nine down and they need to get it to the 24. Ole Miss is up seven. He's in trouble and they got him. But the defense is fired up responding and reacting to that sack. Not only do they get the quarterback but they hit him and hit him hard. I think that can really create some confidence for this defense. The next time this quarterback drops back to throw, you got to be thinking he's going to be a little bit gun shy and concerned about the pressure that these defense is putting on him. The sack makes this a fourth and very long. The punter is going to try to pin him deep in their own territory with a good punt here. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. There's still plenty of time to keep running their offense as usual here. I don't think they need to feel any anxiety about trailing. He gets to about the 31-yard line. That makes it first and 10. From their own 31-yard line, first down. Throws a bullet over the middle. He's taken down at the 34-yard line. From their own 34-yard line, it's second down. He's at midfield. And he's finally taken down at the 29. First down. So we've got a first down after a great running play. out to about the 11 yard line from the 11 yard line first down He is drilled at the 13-yard line. The option is all about timing, and on that play, the timing was just off. That's going to happen sometimes. Now he pitches it. Good outside run there. They get about six yards on the option to the halfback. It's third down and six to go. 
Seven yards for the touchdown. Fires out quickly to the tailback. They'll bring him down for a loss on the play. A yard, if even that, on the play-action pass. It's up, and the field goal is good. The Yellow Jackets lose one of their key players with that injury earlier. Still in the locker room. We don't know the severity, but unlikely that he'll play any more football this afternoon. He's to the 20, makes it to the 22-yard line. You know they'd like to do something a little more than they did on their last drive when they had to punt the ball away. Ole Miss holds a four-point lead. He's tackled around the 24-yard line. Gain of two on the play. That brings up second and nine. Stays in bounds to make a nice catch. And he carries the ball for a nice game. That brings him second and five. Brilliant work by both defenses through three quarters of play. Who can open it up in the fourth quarter? Whoever does has got a great chance to win. Ole Miss leads 14-10. Well, this final few minutes is going to determine this one. Tight ball game. Action set to start here in the fourth quarter. After a decent pickup. Gain of four on one play. play. That'll make, make it third and one. And he hits him hard at the 48 yard line. Call it a gain of one yard. That makes it fourth and inches. Simmons is waiting for the snap. Brought down at the 25. Well, the defenses have certainly been the story in this one. Uh, the defense is playing great. I might recommend dropping down a level or two instead of playing at the higher level. Go down to the freshman level and give yourself a chance to execute a little bit better. Both teams realize that when the ball is snapped, we're one play away from a very different ball game. Black five, black. He gets out to about the 25-yard line. That makes it second and ten. From their own 25-yard line, second down. And he's taken down right around the 42-yard line. First down. Let's see now how the defense responds to giving up the gain on the run. Scrambling around. Quarterback's going to run it, and he's got room to work. Brought down right around the 26-yard line. First down. From the 26-yard line, it's first down. Hey, 
Makes it out to about the 13. That makes it first and 10. Get up, get up, get up. And they make the stop at the 14 yard line. More plays like this, and the coaching staff is going to need to change up the blocking schemes. You can't allow the defense to play in your backfield. From the 14-yard line, second down. Less than three minutes in the game. They'll bring him down around the 18-yard line. You know, as, as a running back, you've got to get upfield north and south. That time, he just seemed to wait and kind of delay his reaction and just got to be able to make a read, get upfield as quickly as possible. In college football, and especially up in the NFL, the more you're dancing around waiting for a big play, the more time you're giving an athletic defense a chance to come and make a play in the backfield against you, and that's what happened. Here comes the pressure. Deep pass to the end zone. Fourth down. They'll line it up for the field goal. Kicks up, and it sails through the uprights. Still, Still first, first down. down. You know this is a real crucial time in the game. It could still go either way. He gets to about the 24-yard line. Well, the execution of this offense has been on display here in this drive. They know what they needed to do, and that's pick up the first down, work the clock, and finish this game off. And with that first down, they may have done it. made at the six yard line the defense might have just run out of chances with that first down right there this offensive line definitely left it all on the field today first down and they've got their eyes on that goal line less than two minutes in the fourth quarter and they get nice yardage on that run fields comes away with five yards on the carry georgia tech's called their final timeout They'll get him for a loss. That is a loss of two yards. That makes it 30 goal. If they can get it in here, it'd make it a two-score game. It's third and goal. at the four-yard line. They don't get back to the line of scrimmage there on the option keeper, a loss of one. It's fourth down. This one should be makeable. Kicks away, and they tack on three points. And with time winding down, they probably won't let this return man feel the ball. Meeks from the eight. He's out to the 30. Knocked out of bounds at the 37. 
So, Kirk, here we go. Caps got center stage. This is what we've been waiting for to watch him try to lead his team to the go-ahead score. And I can't think of a better situation for this offense. I mean, they've got a chance to control this game late in the ball game with one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football in charge. He needs to take a deep breath and just relax and go through his progressions. This defense better dig in. This is going to be one exciting finish for this game. Tackle at the 40-yard line. First down. Spikes the ball. From the 40-yard line, it's second down. Fires quick out to the receiver, and he can't make the grab. I love to see a confident quarterback. But you don't want to just go back there and put blind faith into your throws. You need a little bit more time to evaluate the coverage before you release the football. And it all comes down to this. One last chance to throw one up and see if somebody can bring it down and win the game. He goes downtown. Oh, no. They really didn't need that. And as a quarterback, you can't give up an interception late in the game. You've got to be more careful with the football. down. Got to be careful down here, deep in your own territory. Ole Miss is up four. Now he's level at the 15. The Yellow Jackets, I'm sure, are secure in the knowledge that despite this setback today, they still have one of the best players in the country. Well, this is a devastating loss, but it's one that they're going to have to put behind them. And as you said, they still have one of the best players in the country. They don't need to deviate their plan. Get back to really what they know, and that's getting the ball to their star player. Next week, I'm sure they'll be fine. Well, that's it for this presentation of NCAA Football 14. For Kirk Herbstreit, I'm Brad Nessler saying thanks, and we'll see you soon.